Right, well, Christmas has been and gone. I hope you all had a great Christmas. I know I definitely did. And my God, it certainly has gone quick this year. But 2013 is not far off now. And before you know it, there'll be another Christmas coming along. But anyway, today we're going to do a review of a new locomotive. As you can see, it's made by Hornby. As you can see. And this was a Christmas present. In fact, I got two locomotives for Christmas. I got this, which is actually a Merchant Navy. And I also got a Class D11 from Batman. But we'll look at that later. For now, we're going to do the Merchant Navy. And this Merchant Navy is 35012 United States Line, which sadly no longer exists. She was scrapped, which is a shame. But there are a total of seven merchant navies in preservation. So, that's good. It's a shame this one wasn't one of them that survived, but, like I said, there's seven of them. Well, actually, there's a total of 31 Bully Pacifics in preservation. This one counts because this locomotive was designed by Oliver Bullied himself. He also designed the Battle of Britons and West Countries, and they're in preservation too. Ten are spam cans the unrebuilt ones, and all the rest, they're rebuilt ones. But anyway, enough about the history lesson for now, let's get on to the review. And before we look at the locomotive, let's look at the box. I mean, just look at this box. Have you ever seen anything like it? Just look at the fabric material that's got on it, and it's actually... Well, it's fairly tough, actually, as you can see. And it also has a metal ring there and a hole, which you can pull it out of something, like a shelf. In fact, actually, this locomotive did come separately out of a train set, which is the reason why it's in this box. If it's come from a train set or not, it's still quite fancy. It's the fanciest box I've had. This box makes Batman look like they're shipping the locomotives in jars of jam. Seriously. But it's not just the box. The packaging inside is special. So first we'll take off this plastic window. You have to excuse this mark on it, it's actually from the sellotape, from the Christmas wrapper. But not much can be do that, done about that. There's the Hornby logo. <coughs> then we take off this cover. And there's the locomotive in all its glory. But what's special about the packaging? Well, I'll tell you what's special. It's not polystyrene. It's foam. Now, I know it looks like polystyrene, but, but, can polystyrene do this? Nope, it definitely can't. Because if it was polystyrene, there would be, if we just spin it round, there would be a hole in the back. But there isn't. Right, well, let's get this open. So, we'll do what we just did. In fact, we might have to actually take the foam out. It would probably be much easier. In fact, actually, we'll just rest it on there. And look. Under here, we, ah, yes, look. We get some accessories. Now, to be fairly honest, it's probably not the brilliant place to put them at the back of this box. Underneath the packaging, but still. Okay, so first we get these, which I honestly have no idea what they are. So I've never seen them. And then we get these. We get which I think... Well, obviously it's been opened at some point. You get the Southern Region Bray Rods, which these are very fiddly to put in. You get some buffer beam detail and a, and a coupling, as you can see. In fact, we will take the coupling out. And we'll put the rest to one side. But we'll take these out as well, even though I don't know what they are. Now, I 
suppose it's going to be, yeah, uh, there we go. I thought it was going to be tricky, but it's not. Oh, the whistle was crooked there. There we are. I will have to be very careful with it. But wow. She is really, really stunning. First of all, yes. Spool metal buffers on the front. We have the electric headlamps on the front of the loco there. They're not painted, but I suppose you could if you wanted to. Then we have the smart box detail. You have to excuse some of the slight dust that's on this, but it's not too much of a big issue, but I'll take care of that later. There you have the number at the front, 35R12. And there's a shed number on, on there, which says 70A. So obviously that'll be on the southern region, because this was a southern loco. But I don't know what the shed was. Was it Stuart's Land or something? I don't know. If any of you know, please do comment. Then of course you get the smoke box handles, which turn around that way. Well, you turn them clockwise to open them. And in there would be all the tubing for the driving farm to clear out. You also get metal handrails, which is what I love about these, because being very careful with the model, they start at the smoke deflectors and they go all the way down the side of the boiler. And that is a really nice touch. Also, look at the wheels. These are the box pot wheels, and these were in fact American influenced. And these were actually not as heavy as the ordinary wheels. And these were the designer wheels that Bullard used on all his locomotive designs, because it's a unique design, you see. And there's the valve gear and the link motion and the side rods. Just look at the way it's all connected. It's just done so accurately. You also get some gold piping down here. The back wheel, because as you can see it's a 462, which is a Pacific arrangement. The back wheel is lovely done. That's good detailed. Then we have a proper connector for the tender and rivet around the cab with the number there as you can see with the lining and it's 8p so that's actually quite strong actually thinking about it you get 1p which is weak very weak and basically p stands for passenger mt stands for mixed traffic and f stands for freight but there isn't an e which stands for express quite bizarrely there's also riffing on the top roof with a vent that doesn't open but I don't really care about that to be honest it's still there anyway there's some more detail in here which I think it has something to do with the reversing lever just look at the livery it's spot on just a lovely green with those stripes on the boiler and there's the nameplates United States on just look how well detailed that is you also can't forget the detail under the metal handrails there. And there's the safety valves. And that, which it's some sort of turning wheel, but I'm not sure what it's for. And the dome. And there's some more detail on the boiler there. Just look at that. And you can't forget the cylinders as well. They're really nice and detailed as well. And even they have the stripes. And the running frame as well. On the side, there's some riveting on that too. And there's some other little detail here as well. Now the cab. Well. There's no cab detailing. Which it is a little bit of a shame. But you could always paint it if you want to. In fact actually. I think I will do that. I will probably. Hopefully if I can. If it's not too hard. Which it shouldn't be. I will paint it inside. And that will be really quite good. We also get some windows on the back here. And some metal handrails. Glazing in the cab windows, which is very nice. Then, if we spin around very carefully, there is some more detailing. Oh, well, the first thing be careful with the whistle, the horizontal whistle that is accurate. Be very careful because they are fragile. In fact, I might have to actually glue it in place, that which I think I will. It will save me breaking it. There's the nameplates again. 
and we get some gold piping coming down here, which I'm not sure what this detailing is. Is it something to do with the air pressure? I'm inclined to believe so, but, you know, please do let me know if that's what it is, because I'd be interested to find out. And there's some gold piping coming down here, which is to do for the reversing of the locomotive. And there's some more slightly written down here on the bottom as well. And again, the box pot wheels, they're accurate. And the side rods and the link motion. And that's about it for the locomotive. Actually, she is quite heavy as well for this locomotive. Yeah. I will definitely glue that whistle in place, but she's actually quite heavy. Very heavy. But that's what we want. We want the weight. Because weight is good. No weight is not good. But anyway, wow. So far, so good. Right, so that's the locomotive. Now we'll get on with the tender. Which it's going to be harder to get this one out. So if we do that, which is akin to what they have to do on the polystyrene packaging, but you know, there's not much that can be done about that. And there we go. Well, I haven't broken anything. That's the good thing. There's some marks on the tender. But they're just from my fingerprints. But anyway, right, so there's the steps at the front there. And the back. Spoon buffers at the back, as we can see. And this does have... Well, the coupling socket isn't NEM. But, you know, well actually... No, it's not NEM. Definitely not. <laughs> but it's not too much of a disappointment. I mean, it looks like it can still put a coupling in there in your own. As long as it has this. Hmm. The coupling isn't exactly easy to get in. I'll do it after the video. Shouldn't be too difficult, but anyway. As you can see, the tender does have something to do with the pickups of the locomotive. Because there's metal underneath the connection there. As you can see. Then we get riveting underneath the frames there. The axle boxes, they're lovely detailed as well. And these springs, the tender springs, which are there. Yes, that's what they're called. And there's even these little windows at the back. And the beauty with these is, when reversing, the drive can actually look back behind the tender to actually see from behind and that is actually really quite impressive that is there's a little handle in the, the front there which is to do with the water there's some more riveting here accurate livery with the lining and the the light crest there's some ladders on the back and these electric headlamps which is quite good then you have the water tank there. Yeah, just look at that detail on the back. That is amazing. Some ladders. And the coal. I think it's removable. Yes. It is. Well, it is removable, but. Just doesn't want to play. Hang on a second. Well, oh, here's the car that I've removed. It wasn't easy. I had to get a little needle and prise it from under. But, you know, that is one of the problems with removable coal. As you can see, there's the bunker. Bunker? Uh, I mean, well, there's inside of the tender. So you can put real stuff in you want it to. In fact, for Christmas, I got 16 bags of scatter, two of which are actually real coal. Bags full of real coal. And I will definitely be putting real coal into my locomotives, including this one. 
It has to be done. It definitely has to. And that will be done next year, and I will do a video on that. In fact, I will show it being done on this locomotive. And maybe another one as well. But, you know, I mean, to be fairly honest, removable coal, it isn't always authentic, is it? But, you know, we'll just leave that out there for now. I'm going to have a look at the rest of the tender. In fact, actually, there's quite a bit of weight in the tender as well, actually. So I suppose when there's real coal in there, it will probably make heavy, which is quite good. And that's about it, to be honest. That's it. But we'll do a little bit more history lesson first. Oh, um, did I mention the chimney? Look at that, that's a big chimney. It's not big enough to fit my fingers in, but... It's close. And there's just enough room for a smoke unit in there, which I might do. If only this came with some instructions, but... Well, I have got some instructions for 213 Squadron, so I should be able to use them. Um, and these actually started off as spam cans, these did, unrebuilt. But, it was actually a crash that actually made these being rebuilt. <coughs> Which, it was basically similar to the Battle of Britons and West Countries, except it, well, it wasn't as good looking, if I'm going to say that. But that's not all. When they started off with the unrebuilds, they had chain-driven valve gear, and... Well, the streamlined casing wasn't all that brilliant because sometimes it would actually get set on fire, spontaneously combust. It didn't happen very often though, I'm very well aware of that. And these are actually bigger than the Battle of Britons, hard to believe. In model form it won't show it, but in reality it, well, it does. And these are actually heavier than the... West Countries and Battle of Britons, which are the same design, by the way, I should point out. Except these couldn't go in places where Battle of Britons and West Countries could. But anyway, I suppose I've netted on enough. Let's put it on the tracks. Well, here are the layout, which is the new layout, and this is the first review to be done using the new layout. <laughs> It's a good thing we're ready. Okay, so the locker goes on first and it's on. Well, it's over there, it was off camera. Never mind. And we'll grab the tender. Which just slots in. And I have actually fitted a cup bin on actually. As you can see, it wasn't easy. But I will have it glued in place. Okay, so it's all on. Now we've got to put the coal back in. Wrong way. Mm, actually, no, we'll leave it out. It doesn't seem to want to go back in now. Mm. Although, hang on. Get yeah, in. Okay, right, now we'll give it some juice. Well, well for the first time it's been run, she's running very smoothly. So that the box has been in the way. No, I can't actually get in right and close to here.
Let's give it a bit more juice, shall we? Okay, so this that is a bit quicker. Don't want it going too quick. Just look at all that moving. Well, I can't chase it up to there. So, I have to do it here. Just look at all that link motion and valve gear moving. Just like the real thing too. And it's things like that. That is, it's just so stunning. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Hornby Merchant Navy. Definitely well worth the money. They are just simply exquisite. Right, <clears throat> we have seen what she's like in detail, and her performance, but we don't know how strong she is, so we're going to get a couple to a train. So here's what she's going to be pulling, a rake of four southern region coaches, which is accurate. This is what they would have pulled in the days of steam. And United States line is just over there, so we'll just get it to back up. Oh yeah. Look at that. Just give her a helping hand because the cup rinsing is a bit stiff. There we go. Right, so let's cut the coaches. So the first one, which is this one, which I'm inclined to believe is made by Mainline. And it's a Mark 1, as you can see. This next one we have, which I, I think is a ratio kit. And this one is very special because you can actually take the roof off. Just give me a sec. There you go. And look, there are actually some people inside. Oh. And I didn't put these in, it already came like that. So that is very nice. Then here we have two Mournsaw coaches. In fact, I got these two and that together for 20 quid off eBay. 
This Mortal Coats, they're both different, just look at the colour of ears. And this one has actually got metal wheels, as you can see. And this one has plastic wheels. But I'm thinking at some point changing them to metal wheels. Okay. Right, so there's all the coaches. Right then. So take it away, Merchant Navy. Well, I know she's only pulling four coaches, but she is coping with ears. Just look at how nice that is.